18 minutes after 10, this is Murray Wilton filling the chair for George and Paul, 2GB, 4BC. Good to have you along on this Saturday. 21 after 10, not a bad sort of a day in Sydney. 20 degrees, the maximum. Things are starting to clear up. And uh, for our friends in uh, Brisbane, uh, top of 22 degrees. All right, so that's what's happening on the weather front. I want you to do a little bit of an experiment for me. And I don't know if you can do this or not. Please don't do it while you're driving. But if you're at home... I just want to either you reach into your pocket or rummage through your bag or, or even pull out your wallet. And I suppose what I'm trying to find out from you is how much physical cash do you have in there? How much cash do you have in there? Is it less than you used to carry around? And it seems, without a doubt, we're fast becoming a cashless society. Technology is completely changing the way we're living and the way we're also shopping. From online shopping to virtual reality and artificial intelligence, the way we shop and pay for things has dramatically shifted over the last decade. It clearly isn't a passing fad, though. It's, it's on the increase. And I only heard the other day that there is a belief that in 20 years' time, there won't be any ATMs. So it's not a fad. Technology is here to stay. To discuss how this is going to impact us moving forward, I'm joined by futurist and author of Disruption by Design, leading the dis- change in a fast-changing world. Jihan Pereira, good afternoon or good morning. Welcome to the program. Yeah, good morning, Murray. Great to be here. If we opened your wallet right now, would we find any cash in there? It's a funny question because I was having a look through my wallet as you were asking the question. And there is some, but I actually haven't spent it for about three weeks. And I used to remember when I used to go to the ATM every week because I would be using cash every week. And now it's very rare that I do that. Being a futurist, um, are you one to embrace all the new technology when it first comes out? Or do you step back and say, I'll let it run itself for about three or four months and then I'll embrace it? Well, I'm a bit of an early adopter and I have to be as a futurist, Murray, because I, and as a futurist, it's not that I'm looking at a crystal ball. What I'm doing is I'm looking at trends. So I'm seeing things that are happening elsewhere in the world, in different industries, and then figuring out how they're going to apply to us. So yes, I I do like to be a bit of an early adopter, uh, but sometimes I, I look at things and think, well, that's a lot of hype and maybe we should wait a bit. It's interesting because not that long ago, you could only pay for everything in cash. Um, and then, of course, you know, we had the credit card and the credit card was um, was utilised. Uh, and then we had things like tap and go. Uh, and, and now um, we've got ability to pay for almost anything we want via our telephone or our or our watch. Where are we going? H- have we have we hit a bit of a ceiling in regards to things like that? Surely there's nothing else around the corner. Well, there are. There are. And I think there's some really exciting things coming around the corner and even here right now. And we've, as you say, we used to use only cash and now there are even cashless uh, system. So uh, I remember the the Hyde Park uh, noodle markets. They they're completely cashless. Yeah. Uh, we've got similar things uh, around um, other events. They because we don't need cash anymore, and so we have gone to as you say we've gone to credit cards. We've gone to uh, everyone who's got a uh, Apple Watch or a Fitbit can then just tap their watch on the PayWave machine, um, and we might even be going past that point, Murray. So there are there are even shops now where you can uh, go in and uh, walk out without without paying, without going through a checkout at least. Um, so in fact, Woolies in Sydney is trying this. They've just started a trial with a few stores in Woolies where you walk in and you've got the Woolies app on your phone, and as you put things into your shopping cart, uh, you, uh, or your basket, your trolley, you, you scan them as you put them in. Uh, so then when you go to the checkout, all you've got to do is hold up your phone uh, and it charges your credit card on file and then you walk out. So that's that's already happening and it's already happening here in Australia. Yeah, I think there's probably two sides to all of this. I mean, it sounds wonderful, but at the same time, I think what we are losing is that interaction with other people. And, and we seem to be, you know, that just seems to be fading away um, and we have less conversation, less face time with people as technology increases on a day-to-day basis? Yeah, I think it's something that we need to be careful about and to, to make sure that we don't completely replace all our human face-to-face in-person interactions mm-hmm. with technology. Um, and the, uh, the idea behind these 
technological changes is that they take away some of the pain behind what you would normally do. So I don't know anyone who, who loves grocery shopping. Maybe you do, Murray, but uh, I certainly don't. And if you can make that more convenient, if you can make that faster, then it gives you more time. And then it's up to us to use that time to engage in deeper and better uh, interactions with other people. Now, tell me, I believe that facial technology is coming around the corner in regards to purchasing products. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. So facial recognition technology, in fact, it's used in a couple of examples. So um, the, the Woolies example here in Australia is they, they've done this in the, um, the, the system I just described, yep. in the Woolies stores that we have. Um, in the US, Amazon have created specific retail stores for grocery shopping and they're called Amazon Go. And what they do there is you walk into the store, you scan your phone with your Amazon account yeah. uh, and then it recognizes your face. And as you walk around the store, it tracks you. So it knows who you are because it's got a whole bank of cameras up in the roof looking down and watching what all the shoppers are doing. And then as you put things into your trolley, uh, you don't need to scan anything because it knows who you are. It knows what you've, uh, what you've ordered. The artificial intelligence software uh, behind the, the system will detect what the products are. And then you just walk out. So because it's been able to track your face and track you around the store, uh, you can certainly do that. Uh, and in China, they're using facial recognition technology just for payments. So you don't have to have a credit card, cash, a smartwatch or anything. Mm. Uh, it just recognizes your face and that's attached to your account. What are your thoughts then on, on, on technology? Do you think there's going to come a time where cash is going, is going to disappear completely? I think definitely. I think that uh, cash was really useful at the time because there was no other option. But in time, it will disappear completely. And uh, it's already vanishing in lots of people's lives, especially young people who are quite happy to work without cash. And they will happily work well with just their mobile phones and uh, they'll use Facebook's new cryptocurrency when it comes into uh, comes into play in, in a year or so, mm -hmm. if that happens. And uh, yeah, cash will disappear eventually. Listen, great to talk to you. Thank you very much for the insight. I really appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure, Murray. Great to speak. All the best. Jihan Pereira joining us on the program. Um, he's a futurist and also author of Disruption by Design, Leading the Change in a, in a Fast-Changing World.